Come here now, girl. Hello and welcome to What's Map, your one-stop shop for everything workshop. I'm Bon Bon B and you're very, very welcome. Well, it's Friday, Friday's request day. Today's map's been requested by Haranth and what a choice for a map this is. Detail? Well, this is definitely a detailer's map. Is it, is it finished? Well, yes and no. Uh, yes, it is finished, I think, in terms of the creator, but I think you as the player would want to go in and uh, maybe fix one or two things as well. <sighs> you'll see, you'll see. We'll do the map review, we'll do it slightly differently from normal, but let's do this as normal. That's right, hit the like button, read us, support the channel, gets me seen by more people and helps me grow a little bit more every single day, so thanks for your support. Today's map is Civitus Volpus, a City of Foxes by Serial Killer Meal. Right, okay. Lots of great names going on there. City of Foxes, pretty cool concept. Right, now there isn't a strictly a traditional start square because it looks like a converted save game, but this is where the start square would be. And that is your terrain height. So lots of variation going on there, which is one of my favorite parts of the map is the variation. Uh, there's your resources, uh, oil in the marsh and oil out at sea and why well, you can see what we've got going on there. Then off to the workshop, it's a mass transit map, you will need mass transit for this one. There is a one click collection which I will let you have a look on the right hand side because everything is listed there. We'll be using the Lavianti 1.41 theme and the, uh, the Relight Average LUT. Yes, there's quite a lot, I'm not entirely convinced although i've not checked either way that everything here is used including all of these rocks i'm not i don't know there it might be but uh, never mind anyway you know what i said about it being a converted save game this is what i mean this is just outside of the start square technically your start square intersection see the rendering in the tunnels there that is a big hint what i did was this was the uh, everything unlocked uh, the age of one tiles unlocked I then saved it as a save game and then reloaded the save game and it suddenly looked like this. So when you load up the map, uh, unlock everything using the 81 tile mod and then save it and then reload the save game that you've just saved and it will be fine. Okay, that's the important stuff out of the way. I'm doing things in a slightly different order today because I really want to show you the terrain and the layout first because this for me is the best bit of the entire map. The, uh, the layout of the hills with the rivers going on this side. You don't be doing too much building over this side, but you can get some mountain towns on the go and maybe even possibly some dams. The whole thing looks really nice. Then we've got uh, this um, kind of like a mountain ridge going between the river and the sea, and that looks pretty cool as well. Nothing really to moan about with that. And uh, the, the aesthetics of it are quite, quite pleasing. Well, more than quite pleasing, possibly. Then we've got this uh, this little island here. We'll come back to this island later on in the show. And then uh, you've got this wide old river, which has a shipping route going down it. Then we've got this marsh. It's a large marsh and one of the best marshes I have seen. That will come in and get a little bit, little bit closer. Then we'll get the detail uh, overview on the marsh sorted out straight off the bat. Um, yes, there's a lot of grasses which could affect your frame rate, but it's really nicely done indeed. Whether you'd want to use this area for anything other than backdrop, I don't know, but uh, the options are there. It does look really nice. The marsh is exceptionally well done and a big, big feature. We do actually, in the middle of the marsh, the top end here, have an abandoned castle. It's just a Plops Castle um, asset like that. And you know what? I kind of buy it. Uh, you see uh, the whole area has been like a... Uh, worn away, eroded away, and that kind of makes some sort of sense. Uh, just notice this river here. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about this. We'll come back and check later. I'm pretty sure this is just start of map water flow issues. And you can see it's already merging in with its water spawn point down here as well. So I think that isn't actually a problem. We will check back later on in the show for that one. Right now, let's start having a look at the uh, the networkings. Oh, hang on, before we do that, just over this side of the map as well, we've got a few remnant walls from former buildings up on the hills, former castles possibly. 
I quite like the work that's done here as well. It's just a hint to it. And that gives you a, a hint that today's map is going to be freaking glorious when I get down to the close-ups to have a look at some of these exceptional bits of detailing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that is the best that we get today. Uh, there is a lot of detailing being put into the map, but we are lacking just a little bit in the extra skill levels that you would expect from one of the fine, fine, but we're all learning our trade all the time, and I'm sure Serial Killer Meal will actually possibly, if they keep working like this, um, improve to a point that they will be producing some of the best maps on the workshop. Just right now, I feel that possibly there's a little bit too much detailing going in, and that detracts a little bit from the map uh, you'll see in a moment. So this was that start square intersection that we looked at at the start of this show, and uh, I think it looks okay. Uh, the lanes, uh, we've already got, we've got decals used for lanes, and why not? Why not? I don't mind them. I think the arrows there, I mean, they're pointing in the right direction. So it just doesn't quite feel spot on. And like this extra arrow here pointing inwards, uh, that's a decal arrow. I'm not sure that it was needed. Um, in fact, if we go a little bit further down the highway, you can see here we've got a four into three where we don't have that extra arrow pointing inwards. And there are various bits and pieces like that with lane arrows going on over the entire map. But yes, it's good to see the, the lane decals put in. I probably would have left them. This is a nice little bit of detailing idea, but the central concrete barrier though, that looks freakily scary with these lorries coming so close to it. I probably, I would have had a wider road, maybe with like a, a median going down the middle of the road would have been a better move there, I think. Uh, speaking of that concrete barrier, when we get in really close down here, you may notice it's hovering just a little bit above ground level, and uh, that can only really happen from a converted save game as well. Anyways, um, we've got this, um, this rail bridge, we'll skip over that. We're going to head down towards the start square, if you can call it a start square, it is the start square, but um, it's, not, uh, it's not one that you'll have to unlock as such, from what I can tell. Very hard to know until you play these things, how the uh, mechanics work. But down here in the said start square, which looks like that, we have got a little baby. Do you want to see it? It's a little baby for the little babies. When I say little babies, I mean like the, the old teenagers. It's the Fantoft Student Flats by Seabud. Uh, there are two assets in the, uh, in the set. This is the larger one, the smaller one's over the other side. Look at that in a moment. It's very contemporary. It's uh, very nice. I believe, if I remember rightly from my memory, um, this is a real life building from Bergen in Norway. So if you're building on Rapper's Bergen map, then these would be absolutely essential assets to include. So if you're doing the Bergen map, grab these, use them, it make it a lot more realistic. Uh, factoids, because factoids. The very first British pavements were laid in Edinburgh in 1688. There you go, 1600s laying down real concrete. Well, if it's paving slabs, it would be concrete. Doo. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, Fantoff Student Flats by Seabird. Today's asset of the day. Very nice they are too. Now, because we're doing everything in a slightly different order today as well, I think we'll go for an early intermission and we'll come back and we'll do the rest of the map in one sitting. So if you're ready, here we go with that intermission. Fed up with vanilla or ploppable parking lots in your city? Wondering what Bondi Dea's parking lots roads is all about? Then you need Bon Bon B's parking lots tutorial. Click the information button below. And back to Civitas Volpus and the shipping routes. Right, we have one shipping route going up the entire length of the main river. Uh, is that bridge too low? Uh, around this, uh, around the S bend there. And then we split, we got two options here. Are these bridges too low? Well, they're the same height as the first one. We'll check with the cruiser that is coming this way. We've got a crossover there, which is potentially a problem for uh, colliding uh, ships, but probably okay probably and I quite like that so the shipping routes are pretty good the uh oh let's check the cruiser is it's a close one I don't think I'd want a modern ship getting quite so close to an old brick um an old stone bridge like that but you know 
Anyway, we've got water flow going right past the start square on that river. Uh, we have proper water flow. We can't complain about that. All the vanilla players, not that you'd be playing vanilla with like 7 million assets, will be very pleased with that one. And so we go back to where we left off. Back to the roads. And uh, we've got the concrete barrier disappears. The concrete, oh, hang on, we've got a couple of trees in the road. It's the only place you'll see trees in the road on the map. Um, slight oversight, I feel. And then on, 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 and on. Um, somewhere up here, if I remember rightly, we'll have another concrete barrier, which uh, maybe we've gone past it already, I don't know. But there's a concrete barrier along here, which I felt was a little bit superfluous. Yeah, we passed it. I, I skipped over it and didn't look at it. I'm sorry about that. Uh, this comes down here. Uh, this intersection here is okay. I quite, in fact, here I really like the way that the lane markings have been used. I'll only show you one of them and the direction that we're going, like over here, like um, this this bit here, where the traffic's feeding off. Look at that. That is very tidily done. Really quite like that. That's very good work indeed. So, uh, yes, some places it's really nice and some places it leaves questions. Like this custom bridge leaves me with questions. If we pull back and have a look at it from a distance, that looks really majestic, doesn't it? Yeah? But when we come in and have a look at the choice of road that we're going with, with the custom bridge, uh, look at the traffic having to cut around the median there. It's really very strange indeed, the big trucks cutting across. Look at the median, I thought maybe that was some sort of bike lane. It's actually grass with a hedge line on an elevated bridge going across a river. Maybe it's fake like, it's plastic grass, that'll be what it is, surely. A fake plastic hedge, maybe. And then at the other end, um, we cut across. We're staying elevated, and yet we've gone from a very wide medium, and there's a great elevated bit of um, road here, but we've just got onto a standard two-lane highway. It doesn't quite merge together for me, and once again, find it a little bit distracting. A little bit of good work here. I really like this farm. This farm works really nicely for me. One minor, minor, tiny, weeny pick on it detailing area where the uh, the vines are growing on the on the path there. But that is tiny error, and I'd be prepared to let that go across the whole map. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a good bit of work there. We'll we'll leave the roads for now. Let's have a look at the rail. We're not going to look at all of the rail, but again. This viaduct here looks really amazing. Comes across the river, stays elevated. Looks like it's going to go on forever. And you wonder why are we still elevated? And the answer is because we need to be elevated to get up into the hills. And this is again very slickly done. And comes down to ground split when we hit ground immediately. And again, this railway asset looks really great with that split. And then we have two tunnels of separated over there. Now, one of them's really good, which is this one. Um, you know how I like looking into tunnels. We have no problems with this at all. Um, it's uh, well, a tiny little bit of tunnel glitching above the surface there, but it's very minor. I'm, I'm, I'm rather, I'd give that an 8 out of 10. This one, though, is a bit of a problem. Again, for screenshots only, you know, if you're filming like a nice steam train coming out of here, then you can see in here, you can see the railway track actually runs into the side of the tunnel. You can see the blue mantle in there and the blue mantle on the outside. And basically that is just a little bit shoddy. The tunnel isn't really designed to be used on the curve and it does look that way, unfortunately. Right, let's head over this way. Um, now, uh, one of the required mods is the vanilla tree remover, which you see I haven't actually got active. Reason being is it's not compatible with traffic manager and I completely forgot about this. So. Uh, I should have deactivated Traffic Manager, but uh, you probably want it for this map. So you know, the vanilla trees there, the drowned trees, I'm not going to mark down on because they should be, well, disappeared because they're removed. There's also a nice little use of a vanilla asset over here somewhere um, from the Parklife DLC and it's at the top of this mountain over here. There we go. That's right. It's the Parklife Glory Hole. <laughs> it's been used kind of like as a volcano. I uh, quite like that as a volcano crater. Nice to see it used in a different way. And uh, you know, must have been some sort of temptation to use those steam vents around it just to make it look like it's still active. But I'm glad you didn't uh, quite like it the way that it is. And of course, the vanilla tree remover would have taken away those bright green vanilla trees as well. 
Uh, water, we've got quite a lot of interesting water on this map. Some of it's very good, some of it's hmm, spludgy, like here. You see we've got some dryness going on here. Now, is this starter map water flow issues? Well, if we have a look, you can see the water is coming down. And we'll just pull back a little bit and it starts to fill up this area. You see it's now filling up, so ah, oh, must have been starter map water flow error. And I don't believe actually that is the case. I think this is stop start water. So if we come up again, now you see it's sort of drying out a little bit here. We've got a dry patch here now, a bit of water here and a dry patch there. And what we've got is um, it's almost excellent. There's not quite enough water to fill the entire river. And what we need is a few more very light spawn points for the water as we got down to the wider parts of the river. And that would have filled it up really nicely indeed. Um, the actual water source is more fantasy map than realistic. Let's ignore that. I don't want to draw away from what does look really nice. There's a really lovely river, just needs a tiny little bit more water with some dotted spawn points. And that would be amazing. And I think that's pretty much the entire map covered, I think. Oh, the original river, let's just check that one. Yeah, that has completely filled out now and that looks like it's it's good and firm and here to stay. So there we are. What do you think of this map though? Is it a one star map? Is it a five star map? Is it somewhere in between? Your vote really does count. We use it at the end of the month for the viewer's choice top 10. Will this be one of the top 10 maps of the month? Well, only you can decide. Don't forget tonight, six o'clock, the viewer's choice for August. That's the top, t uh, top 10 maps as voted by you for last month. Right, aesthetically, I really like this. I really like it. If you don't get in too close with seeing all the detailing issues, it's really very nice indeed. I can't quite give it the fifth star, but it is a very strong, very strong four star performer. Detailing. There's no argument there is a lot of detail on this, but there's a lot of it that isn't quite there, you know? None of it's particularly awful, apart from a couple of trees on the road. Um, but I can't really go higher than three stars. Needs tidying up, I'm afraid. Gameplay potential, I would give this four stars. Possibly push it towards a fifth. Possibly. But I feel there's just too much that the, uh, the, the casual gamer like me or you would want to go around and tidy up first. So I'm going to give it a solid three. Three is playable. Nothing wrong with a three. Can't quite make four. Civitas Vulpus City of Foxes by Serial Killer Meal. This, I think, is a creator who we're going to see coming back with some really good stuff in the coming months and years, hopefully. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, commenting, for liking, and for subscribing, and for joining me for another map in the What's Map series. Don't forget the viewer's choice, top 10 tonight, 6 o'clock UK time, and thereafter. And of course, another map in the What's Map series tomorrow. There's another map on the screen now if you want to go and check that one out. It's got the vote popped on it this morning. And uh, I think I'm done. Yeah, I think I'm done. You need a microwave to go. Bing! I'm done. See you tomorrow.